Okay, so first up today is going to be talking about emissive shaders and mesh lights, which is what you see here on the screen. The sphere is a mesh light, and then the two cubes are emissive shaders. Uh, similar effects, a couple of different ways to do it. So we'll cover that, and then I'm going to kind of show you an application of that um, with faking a light bulb effect. So here's where we're headed, and I will show you where we're starting. So we're just going to start with a very basic scene, which is basically what you just saw. Um, let's start with the sphere. So I think we've talked about this before briefly, but just, but just as a refresher, uh, any mesh in your scene can become a light. Uh, with Arnold, you just click on the mesh light uh, button, uh, create mesh light. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to go into wireframe. It's going to get some attributes here that make it a light. And if I hit the render button in Arnold, this is what we get. Um, we get a dim light in the center. We don't actually see the light itself, but we see the reflection of the light. And we see it illuminating the two cubes and the ground next to it. So, you know, sometimes you want to see the source of the light, sometimes you don't. Uh, if you don't want to see the source of the light, this is great uh, by default. You know, you've got your kind of general light attributes that you can modify same way you can any other light. You've got color, uh, you have intensity, you have exposure, which do similar things. Um, you can also, if you prefer to work with color temperature, you can turn that on. And the camera in Maya by default is white balanced to 6500. You can see that right now it is perfectly white. So if we go lower than that, it's going to get more amber. And if you go higher than that, it's going to get more blue. Um, so if you wanted to kind of a more of an incandescent feel, you could go incandescent bulbs are generally between 2800 and 3200. But if you go all the way down to 3200, that's quite a bit. So you might want to back that off and do something like 4200 or 48, you know, you can, whoops, 4800. You can dial that into taste. Uh, too many. There we go. Uh, if you're doing some, uh, a more fire effect, fire is even lower. It's something like 2000. Okay. And, you know, fire has a couple of different colors. You can kind of mix and match there. And on the other side of things, if you want it to be a cooler effect, um, something a little bit more sterile and sci-fi feeling, you could be on the warmer or on the um, on the cooler side of the spectrum. Or right in the middle at 6500 is white. Um, and then we have this light visible button, which is the important one if you do want to see the source of your light. So if you have a mesh that is modeled um, and you're trying to, you want that to actually be the thing that's illuminating the scene, uh, then you can turn that on, and now you can see that. Um, you can adjust how visible that light is to various passes. So if you don't want this to affect subsurface scattering, you can just turn that off. If you don't want this light to um, be taken into account for any specular calculations, you can turn that off. And now you can see that it's, you see the diffuse results of that light, but you don't see any specular reflections. Uh, likewise, you can do the opposite. If you don't want to see any diffuse reflections, you just want to see the specular reflections, then you can turn the diffuse off. And this can be helpful if you have a metallic object and you're trying to get that perfect light highlight on one of the edges. You can create a light and um, turn off diffuse and really only have it affect specularity and then you, know, you can get those results. You have these, these controls in, in other lights too, not just in uh, mesh lights. Um, and that's really it. I mean, you can, you can give this light, uh, you can texture this any way you would texture anything else. So you can give it a file texture and let's see. Okay. We'll go with this. I've got a wood floor texture and let's see if we can get this to, we may need to reload and adjust some things. Maybe. Eh, maybe not. Oh, turn off color temperature. There we go. Turn off color temperature. Now you can see that the texture is there. And the, I mean, if you were going for like a lampshade, a textured lampshade, this would be a great way to do it. Obviously, your lampshade wouldn't be made out of wood. Um, but you get both illumination and you get some coloring from that texture. 
but you still get to retain the texture, and that's a, a pretty cool uh, thing right there. So uh, those are your options that you have with the mesh light, um, behaving in a similar fashion, but a different way to get there. Uh, we can look at emissive shaders. So I'll select this cube. I'm going to right click. Okay, so I've got this bug with Maya that's been happening for a couple of weeks, and I don't know why. Um, it's only in component mode. But uh, So if we give it a new material, I'm going to, again, go with an Arnold standard surface shader. And I'm just going to work in the attribute editor. I'm not going to open up the hypershade right now because I don't need to, and it just clutters my screen. Um, if we scroll all the way down, well, not all the way down, uh, about halfway down to emission, we've got two options. We have weight, which is how much it emits, and we have color, which, as you might guess, is the color that it emits. So I'll open back up my render view, and you can see with the emission all the way up at 1, that's what we get. And we can turn it up and down, intensity, and, of course, set the color. So let's go with... I know in the demo I had blue, but maybe I'll back that off a little bit so it's not quite so obnoxious. Mm. Okay, so that's uh, setting up the emission through um, through a shader. Again, both of these attributes have texture slots, so you can apply textures to control the weight or the color. So if you wanted only parts of, your, of the mesh to be emissive, instead of turning the whole thing into a light, you can just give it some emission and then drive it by a texture. So I'll just use a checker pattern to make it kind of obvious. Um, so now only, you know, the white checkers are emitting light and the black checkers are not. So plenty of things you can do there. If you were, if you had a maybe a computer screen, um, you could select that. You could, um, you know, if you wanted something that looked like it was super sci like a sci-fi panel and you wanted some glowing light between the edges you could uh you could use this for that as well so plenty of options um and what's nice is you get this really nice soft fall off um, it's a big soft light and uh gives some cool effects now uh that's kind of the abstract use cases i'll save that let me open up um a more concrete use case so I'm going to go to my ArcViz and Scenes, and I've got this floor lamp that I downloaded from the internet. Open it up. Okay. So let me just quickly give this scene something to actually illuminate. And I'll add a sphere too. Why not? Actually scale it up first, and then... Okay. So we've got a sphere in our scene, and we have this light. And if we light it up, now we can, in this light there is a light bulb, which you can't really see right now. Okay, so I could set that to a mesh light. Okay, and then if I go into Arnold, I'm not going to see anything right away because I need to turn up uh, the intensity and the exposure. Set the intensity to like 10. Starting to see a little bit of it. Okay. So the intensity is at 10. Let's set the exposure to like 15. Okay, now you can see it, but it's also really killing this the lampshade. So instead of that, let me actually find a good camera angle so you can see... that out of the way here okay so here's an angle where you can you should theoretically be able to see the bulb and the sphere all in one um, but it's in order to get enough light on the sphere you have to blow out the lamp and that's just way too much so instead of that I'm going to uh, just give it a new material, and I'll give it an Arnold shader, standard surface, and I'll just rename this bulb, and I'm going to leave it for now. Did I just have other objects selected? This is 
So I want to make sure that that's not still going to emit on me. Okay, we should be good. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to light this sphere with an independent light. So I'm just going to go back to my regular rendering shelf and choose a spotlight. And I just need to scale up this scene a bit. And I'm going to stick that spotlight in roughly where the, the bulb actually is, where that light would be coming from. Let's see, that's about probably easier to do this in quad view here. Okay, that looks pretty good. I just need to rotate it. Okay, so we'll go with that. We can always make adjustments as we go. Actually, yeah, that needs to, I can already tell. Okay, so now I can set up the spotlight here, and I'm going to, we'll increase the cone angle a bit, and I'll turn on the, uh, the render so you can see how these adjustments are affecting it. It also seems like I've got there's some extra light in here that I need to get rid of. I don't know what's what's emitting, so give me just a second. Okay, I just deleted the mesh light, and now when we hit render, perfect. We're not seeing that light affect things. So now I can go back and uh, work on my spotlight. So I've got that selected, and let me actually find a good angle so we can see what it's doing. Okay, so as that's rendering, now we can bring up the intensity of the light. We can actually go down to the Arnold section and bump that exposure up quite a bit too. Let's try 15 on the exposure. And now we're getting light on the sphere without blowing out the lampshade. We just got a little bit more control. Um, I'll go back up to the top of my settings and I'm going to adjust the penumbra angle and the drop off which is just going to kind of soften that pool of light a bit. Okay, you can see that the penumbra let me show these one at a time. The penumbra angle is I'll set that to 0. Um kind of the I don't know the exact technical thing, but it's kind of the the fall off from the edge of the of the light or of the pool of light. So nothing in the real world is perfectly at zero. Nothing is a completely hard edge. Even if you have something like a, an ellipsoidal or a spotlight, you're still going to have a little bit of, of blurriness on the edge. Um, I'm going to go even further. And then drop off is how much it kind of feathers from the edge. So we'll go something like that. Um, but you can see that it, it feathers the edge, but it doesn't actually change the quality of the shadows. To do that, you need to go down to the Arnold section and adjust the radius, which is like the size of the source. So by default, it's at zero, so it's like a point source. As you increase that, uh, you'll see that the shadow will become softer, and render times will increase, but um, that's how you adjust that. Maybe we'll bring the exposure down a little bit. Okay, so let's say that that's the, the quality of light that we like, and maybe I'll uh, do some color temperature on this and warm it up a bit. Okay, so now we have the light in our scene the way we want it. Now, just to add that little extra accent, let me uh, bring that camera back around to a spot where we can see see the bulb, which you can't see it right now. You can see a little specular highlight because that bulb is set to be a glass uh, material. But now, if I select that, we'll go to our... Uh, oops existing material, bulb, and now we can set the emission, bring that emission up. Now it's illuminating the inside of the lamp, and we can see that hot spot, but it's not, you know, we have independent control, okay, which means we can make things more, feel more realistic. Now, the last thing that I would do is I would adjust this color to a 
more amber color. So it feels like the light um, that is emitting from the lamp is the same as the source that we see. Okay. That's a couple of different ways to get meshes to emit light um, in controllable ways. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about lighting um, and actually start to light a scene.